you have a function. It is a function of three variables. Let's assume x, y, z. W equal to function of x, y, z. Now I'd like to see its derivative in one particular direction. Suppose if you you have some surface here and you'd like to know its derivative, the rate of change of this surface in particular direction. It means x of t is given. X of t, y of t, z of t are given. In that case, you can see how to take its derivative dw by dt using chain rule you can say that this is dou f by dou x into dx by dt plus dou f by dou y into dy by, by dt small is other. Now this one you can write it as dot product of two expressions. One expression is this dou f by dou x i plus so you can see this as a dot product of these two expressions. Now, this vector, if you observe, which is exactly tangent vector to the given term, dx by dt, d by dt, dz by dt, which represents tangent vector to the given term. Anyway, so if you want to know the rate of change of this function, so first you take this guy, this vector, dot product with the tangent vector. It means whatever direction, in which direction you want the rate of change. So you take the direction vector, that direction vector here is nothing but tangent vector. So tangent vector dot product with this will give you rate of change of this function. And this is how we are going to find the directional derivative of the function. So if you want directional derivative of the function in a particular direction, you take this guy, whatever you have it here, and you take the dot product with the direction. Uh, this one can be rewritten like this, dou by dou x i plus dou by dou y j plus dou by dou z k which is acting on f. It is same as this, right? Now you found an operator here. So the operator is this and we are going to denote this operator with this notation. Okay. Okay. One can call this as a gradient operator or, or the derivative operator. We can call it simply as a derivative operator. Why? Because which gives you the derivative in each direction. So if you want a, di a derivative in a particular direction u, so now the derivative is nothing but you take great del acting on f dot product with the direction. So this will give you the direction derivative. Now remember this is an operator. It is not it, it is it is just an expression and it is an operator. And here let me write what is del square operator. It is nothing but del dot del. Why? Because these are like this is a this is in a vector form. I can take the dot product. So dot product of this with this is nothing but dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square plus dou square by dou z square. And this is what we call Laplace operator. Okay. Now let us see what is the action of this operator on a scalar field and as well as on the vector. Now, if you take del acting on f, this is what we are going to write gradient, okay, the rad f, which is nothing but, okay, this is how the gradient of a function is defined, gradient of a scalar function. To understand this, let us, let us look at a problem. Let's say gradient of, we are asked to find 2xy plus z squared plus 1. So what do you do? First you differentiate this with respect to x. The result is 2y into i. Next differentiate it with respect to y which is 2x into j. Next you differentiate this with respect to z which is 2z into q. So this is the gradient of this function. Let us look at one more example. Let's say del acting on 2xy plus xz plus yz. Now, derivative of this with respect to x is 2y plus z to i. Next, derivative of this with respect to y, which is 2x plus z to j plus derivative with respect to z, which is x plus y. So, this is how we calculate gradient of a scalar. The next thing. Let us see what is the action of this operator on a vector. So there are two vector operations we know. 
one is the dot product and another is the cross product so first let us look at the dot product that is del dot product with a vector field. so now i need to deal with a vector field. so let me mention And did I talk about uh, directional derivatives in the last class? I think I didn't solve any problems on di directional derivative. Just I mentioned how to find. Uh, let me do one thing. Let me just quickly tell tell you how to find the directional derivative, and later I'll move to this uh, line integrals. So directional directional derivative of f in the direction of u. Okay, so we are going to denote it like this: du of f at a, b, c, which will be given by gradient of the function at this point dot product with u cap, where u cap is the unit vector. So, for example. You are given with a function f of x y z equal to x y plus two x square y z. This is the function, and you ask it to find directional derivative in the direction of i minus j plus two k. This is the direction, direction vector. What do you do? First, you find the gradient. Gradient of f is nothing but y plus four x y z. And derivative of this with respect to y, which is x plus two x square z j plus, and this will be two x square y into k. Okay, so this is the uh, directional derivative. Sorry, gradient of the function. And you know what is u bar? So let me find u cap. That is i minus j plus two k. Divided by its magnitude, that is square root of one plus one plus four, that is root six. So when you take grad f dot product with u cap, so ith component here multiplied with ith component here, so one by root x is common. So this is sorry, one by root six is common. This is y plus four x y z. This is the first term, one times of this, minus of x plus two x square z plus two times of two x square y. So this is the directional derivative in that direction. If you want uh, this derivative at some particular point, let's say I want the derivative at one one one, then what do you do? You simply substitute one 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 in place of x y z. So this will be one by root six into one plus four minus one plus two plus two times of two. This will be one by root six. When you simplify five and two, two plus four, this is six. So which is root six? So root six is the direction derivative of f at. One 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 in the direction of u. Okay, so this is how we find the directional derivative. And sometimes you may be asked to find directional derivative in the direction of normal vector. So let us see how to find normal vector using the gradient, normal vector of a surface, which is given by f of x y z equal to k. Let's assume that the surface equation is given by f of x y z equal to k. Or you can write it as z equal to, or sometimes you can write z as a function of x comma y. This is how also you can write. Okay, you express it in any way. Then, so normal vector is nothing but gradient of that function. So gradient of f will give us the normal vector to the surface, which is nothing but dou f by dou x i plus. So this is the normal vector to the given surface. If the surface is represented by f of x y z equal to k, and if you want unit normal, you you are going to divide with its with its length. And these normal vectors are useful for to find the angle between two surfaces. 
let us say you are given with two surfaces two surfaces are given let's assume phi 1 equal to k and phi 2 equal to c these are the two surfaces now some uh, these two surfaces are intersecting at p okay phi 1 and phi 2 or let p be the point in the intersection of phi 1 and phi 2 now i'd like to find what is the angle between two these two surfaces at p angle between phi 1 and phi 2 at p that will be given by theta theta equal to gradient of phi 1 at p it means the normal vector of phi 1 at p so this is what or let me write it as n1 dot product with n2 divided by magnitude of n1 into magnitude of n2 so this is what will give us cosine of the angle cos theta but if you want exactly theta theta will be given by cos inverse of n1 dot product with n2 by their magnitudes where you can see what is n1 n1 is nothing but gradient of phi 1 at p and similarly n2 here is gradient of phi 2 at p so this is how you can find angle between two surfaces all that you need is normal vectors to those surfaces once if you know the normal and if you see the angle between the normals you can say that that is the angle between the surfaces and I'd like to mention a small point at this direction little bit too. If you want to see what is the maximum rate of change, or you, if you want to know what is the direction in which the function has maximum rate of change. So that direction is nothing but normal vector direction. It, it is nothing but gradient phi. So you can, you can write a note. The note is that directional derivative is maximum. A directional derivative of f is maximum in the direction of gradient of f. Okay, and if you want to see what is the maximum rate of change, which is nothing but absolute value of grad f. So absolute value of grad f will give you the maximum rate of change, and the direction is nothing but gradient of f. If you want to see the minimum rate of change, you can simply take negative of that gradient direction. So the fastest increase and the fastest decrease. The fastest in increase happens in the direction of grad phi, whereas the fastest decay happens in the direction of negative grad phi. And if you want to see the minimum rate of change, that is negative of absolute value of grad phi. Grad. Okay, so this is about directional derivative. You can find some questions on finding directional derivatives and the maximum rate of change and uh, um, the direction of maximum rate of change or the minimum rate of change. Similarly, finding angle between the surfaces using the normal vectors or finding the normal vectors of surfaces. So you can find some questions like this. Okay.